Blown away by blown glass, it took four artists all working together to create this single piece. Learn more about your artist community today on The Express. It's an all creative lineup this week. The wood I use is locally sourced, it comes from the forest here, these mountains, so the skis are literally riding on the mountains that they lived on. Revisit our favourite Sea to Sky artists, starting in Mount Curry. Then drop by My Millennium Place this month to explore this Whistler artist's work. It's just a matter of trying to get yourself um, out there with your work and having as many people see it as possible. And join us for a new road trip in our very own backyard. When I first entered this, uh, this valley many years ago, I got the sense of that immediately, that this was a place that would challenge you and, and bring out the best in. This and more coming up on The Express. Welcome to The Express on Shaw TV. I'm your host, Nicole Fitzgerald. And it's a creative assault here at Art Junction with paintings floor to ceiling. It's the perfect setting to revisit our favorite art stories for the season. But first, let's kick things off with the new road trip. It's where the wild things are. Instead of recreating, though, this adventure is about recreating oneself. Quality Assured Collision Road Trip is brought to you by Quality Assured Collision Services and our network of 18 auto body shops across BC. It's humbling when you get into a landscape like this, you can't help but feel how in insignificant you really are. There is only the sound of breathing, your heart pounding in your chest. Troubles of the world fall away into the wilderness like snow, resting on strong limbs that instinctively shoulder the weight with such beauty. The Callahan Valley has a special significance uh, with native people and they call it Peakan Soti, which is uh, in Salish, uh, wild spirit place. A wild spirit himself, Brad Sills joins me on my 20 plus kilometer journey to the Callahan Lodge. A love affair that began three decades ago. His knowledge and feelings for the area run as deep as the season's snow. A young men used to come here uh, as a rite of passage to, to become a man and it was a place of training. When I first entered this, uh, this valley many years ago, I got the sense of that immediately, that this was a place that would challenge you and, and bring out the best in you. And so this Whistlerite opened this wild spirit place to others. Via the quiet mode of cross-country skiing, guests can glide through a 90-kilometer network of professionally groomed cross-country trails to access powder-filled meadows and old-growth forests. It's one of the largest ski areas in North America. The Wild Spirit Trail takes on average three to four hours for recreationalists like me. Although the lodge does have a record of 29 minutes. <laughs> Whether an athlete or an adventurer just like me, you definitely want to pack a snack and don't forget your camera. So what made you come out all the way into this wilderness to build a lodge? Ever since I was a kid, I've had a real deep appreciation for natural environments. And so what he calls his mistress was born, the Callahan Lodge. Ah, made it! Today is just a day trip, but taking these incredible views around the lodge, I can see why people want to spend a couple of days here. And there's snowshoeing, cross-country trails all over here, as well as backcountry skiing. We operate on an all-inclusive basis here, so uh, people get all their meals when they come here, appetizers when they arrive, and then a four-course dinner prepared by our resident chef. A wonderful reward one that wouldn't be as sweet without the long road to get here. And I think that's why we've been so successful. They've challenged themselves and they've inspired themselves. A true journey dressed only in white, clear, free, at ease, and thanks to it, so too are our minds. From the Callahan Valley, I'm Nicole Fitzgerald for Shaw TV. Quality Assured Collision Road Trip has been brought to you by 
quality assured collision services and our network of 18 auto body shops across BC. The Callahan Lodge is located at the bottom of Powder Mountain, which boasts more than 5,000 square hectares of skiable terrain. That's the sum total of Whistler and Blackcomb Mountains combined. Local artwork is on display here at Art Junction in Function Junction. But art doesn't necessarily need to restrict itself to the walls. Sometimes it's best appreciated on your feet. I feel like there's a revolution going on in the, in the ski industry right now that's bringing it back to the skiers. Custom building skis in his home-based workshop, Johnny Foon is part of that revolution, personally shaping each pair to suit the intended coastal mountain skier. Of all the things that exist in skiing, the thing that can make you a better skier is, a, is your ski. Despite a long history in the sport, this pioneer of big mountain skiing was still searching for the ideal ski. As the saying goes, if you want it done right, do it yourself. I had cabinet making skills before I moved to the mountains here and it was actually pretty easy to take those skills and just get on the internet and look at how people are building skis. Steering away from the widely available factory built foam core ski, Johnny takes his designs back to the roots of skiing. The wood I use is locally sourced, it comes from the forest here, these mountains, so the skis are literally riding on the mountains that they lived on. The core of the skis is made from Douglas fir, which is commonly found in our BC forests, and according to this ski builder, it creates a strong, snappy ski with a lot of life. I think there's uh, way more energy put into a wood ski, way more energy exists, and the hands-on, the energy of a rider who's passionate about riding. Take Johnny's passion for the mountains, add fiberglass, carbon, Kevlar, and a red cedar top sheet, and layer by layer, a functional work of art is created. Every pair of skis I make, I want them. I want to keep them, I want to ride them. And if I don't feel that way, I, they don't leave here. Johnny's handcrafted Typhoon series, named after his son Ty, are not only treading lightly on the environment, but he's finally found the ski he's been looking for. I honestly think the ski allows me at 50 years old to ski better than I did when I was 25. From the home of Foon Skis in Mount Curry, I'm Jessica Turner for The Express. We're revisiting our top artist picks in the sea to sky here at Art Junction in Function Junction. From skis to paintings to textiles. Still to come, a material girl. Multimedia stitches together photography with material and thread. You've really got to market yourself. I have my website, first and foremost. I think it's important as any artist to have a website because people want to see uh, images of your work. And wearable art with a message. A lot of my jewelry is inspired by the outdoors and the world surrounding us. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by Artina's Handcrafted Canadian Jewelry, 387 Water Street in Gastown and Government Street in Victoria. Welcome back to Art Junction in Whistler. I'm your host, Nicole Fitzgerald, and you're watching The Express. We've stepped up to the second level here at Art Junction with BC artists like Gloria Massey on display. My Millennium Place is also big on supporting our community artists. Every month, the local gallery showcases Sea to Sky talent. And this month, it's Alison Hodson. I love being able to capture something that I love on camera and being able to translate that into something that's lasting. Capturing aspects of nature today, it's step one of Whistler artist Alison Hodson's creative process to transform images into these finished fabric works of art. Start with a photograph, print that out large scale, and then I cut into the photographs. So if you imagine a puzzle, like just pulling out the pieces so you're left with holes within the image, and then I cut up pieces of fabric 
layer them and uh, machine stitch them directly into the canvas. So, you know, areas like here, that's where you'll see the original photograph on canvas, and then it moves into areas of solely fabric where I've stitched a bunch of little pieces together. Making these pictures look more like three-dimensional paintings, Alison spends weeks and months capturing, cutting and stitching, her inspiration coming mainly from things that are old. I am really drawn to old sort of buildings, things that already have texture to begin with. Old bricks that are sort of deteriorating from the environment, trees and bark, and all the textures involved in that. So it's a real range of subject matter. A unique style that's earned Alison award-winning recognition in the five years she's been combining fabric and photography. So far she's had work featured in exhibitions throughout Canada, done several commission pieces and opened her home studio. But she says it hasn't always been smooth sewing. It's hard, it's hard for sure. You've really got to market yourself. I have my website first and foremost. I think it's important as any artist to have a website because people want to see uh, images of your work. And a lot of artists are quite shy and you know, I, I really had to work at um, marketing myself. So approaching galleries, um, taking advantage of the shows that are out there. And Alison's hard work and creativity has certainly paid off. She set to stage her first Sea to Sky solo exhibition, where some of her newest pieces like this will be on show. You'll see probably about 17 pieces of mine. It's going to be solely my work, uh, which is exciting. And um, on the opening night, I'm doing an art raffle, and the proceeds are going to be going to Red Cross Canada in hopes to help the people in Japan. And from fundraising to finding artistic success, there's nothing that can stop Alison from continuing to create her image material yep. masterpieces. Perseverance, you gotta just like keep going. It's just a matter of trying to get yourself um, out there with your work and having as many people see it as possible. In Whistler, I'm Alana Ponsonby for The Express. Looks like that. Again, Allison's work will be on display at My Millennium Place until April 13th. Admission is free. Jewelry artisans play a big part in the Sea to Skies art scene. Wearable art, it's both beautiful and functional. And Rosie Harris not only works with gems, but she's one herself. Rosie Harris has a short commute to work. Amongst the surfboards, car tires, laundry and recycling, she finds herself a creative space where she works on her jewellery designs. A lot of my jewellery is inspired by the outdoors and the world surrounding us. A lot of water themes, earth, trees, mountains, you'll see it over and over again. Rosie Harris always knew she wanted to work with her hands. Moving from beading to metalwork, she recently finished her diploma in jewellery art and design in Vancouver. She is now in her sixth year of creating unique designs and she certainly has the tools to prove it. Usually it starts with an idea or an occasion. There's either something that they want or the occasion being there's an engagement. If it's a gift, we sometimes have to get a little bit sneakier about that. I can't give away all my secrets because otherwise people might know when I'm trying to size up. It's every girl's dream to have a box of jewels, and Rosie has a large selection. She tries to find the connection between wearer and object, matching them with the right materials and precious stones to make their own piece of history. I try to use as many Canadian suppliers as possible, support the local economy. That being said, I've also done some recycled materials before. I had a woman whose wedding ring, she wanted to use gold that she already had around. I think it even had her father-in-law's gold tooth in it. <laughs> Rosie jokingly mentions that she uses the same tools as a dental technician. So if she ever fancied a career change, she'd be set. 
Making art that people will wear for the rest of their lives is a huge honor, and there's often a good story behind each piece. One time I had a client, we were doing some wedding rings. They were supposed to be played rings, and I guess as a surprise right before the wedding, he kind of pulled me aside and was like, okay, we're gonna add all those diamonds to the ring. She doesn't think, you know, she's gonna get those till later as an anniversary gift. Anyway, she had called me wanting to try on the ring with her dress, and I had to pretend I didn't have time to see her because uh, I had the stone being or the stones being set in the ring, and she couldn't see it because it was supposed to be a surprise for the wedding day. Rosie tries to capture a moment, a memory, and even a promise. She leaves her mark on each piece, both in design and signature. This is Dee Raffo in Rosie's Whistler workshop for the Express. Rosie does a lot of custom work for brides and grooms. One of a kind is the crux of our next story as well. Coming up after the break, art at your waistline. The fanny pack is really important to me because it encompasses <laughs> all that I am, really. <laughs> Easter Seals 24-hour relay sends kids with disabilities to camp. Please help these kids by signing up for the 24-hour relay now. Make a difference. Register at 24hourrelay.com. Welcome back to the Express on Shaw TV. I'm your host, Nicole Fitzgerald. An art junction not only displays art, but they frame it as well. And they'll frame anything from carpets to Olympic memorabilia, which is really popular right now. Also popular, the fanny pack. It's hip, no really, and nobody does it better than Love Jewels Leather. <laughs> the fanny pack is really important to me because it encompasses <laughs> All that I am, really. <laughs> it's kind of geeky, it's kind of stylish. Inspired by the hip sack toting tourists that flock to her ski resort, Whistler's Julia Vegalado stitches fashion into functionality in her home studio. Truly a hip sack, this Italian lambskin lover is a far cry from the 1980s neo nylon tote. The edgy look is just one of Julia's growing collection entitled Jules Loves Leather. The great thing about Jules' stuff is it's, it's art, but it's also functional too. The drawing university major first cuts leather strips, then transfers her nature-inspired designs via carbon copy for tracing. The burning pen is creating the outline for the drawing. It creates this nice little wall for the ink, so when I apply the ink, it kind of just like stays in its zone. Like a poet, her fingers are stained with ink. Only pictures tell her story. Tales of sea monsters and trains travel into the far reaches of the imagination. All my belts are named, and this guy's name is Homer. I love pirate ships too. <laughs> this set of trees is really fine and intricate, and I have to do it like 10 billion times. The independent business is slowly growing global roots. In addition to one-of-a-kind craft shows in Toronto and Vancouver, Love Jewels is also sold in stores throughout BC, with designer showcases in New Zealand and the United Kingdom as well. We have a connection to a, a designer called Swag and Soul. In the UK, the fanny pack is taken off, so they um, contacted me to make some fanny packs specific to their collection. City sought, not city-fied. This hipster's distinctive West Coast flair pushes traditional concepts of fashion to the back. It definitely took some convincing. I, I can't say I was uh, naturally a big fan of the fanny pack, but, um, but then again, I've, I've never, I guess, really seen a fanny pack the way that Jules does it. Love Jewels Leather is expanding its line. Look out for a messenger bag, clutches, and shoes in the near future. Artists in the sea to sky are constantly reinventing themselves, and therefore, they're reinventing how we look at art, even on a plate. Later on in the show, chef or mad scientist? 
we're using liquid nitrogen. Yeah, maybe we play around a bit with it, but I'm not a fully on scientist. We don't have microscope. Our next story is also about working with raw ingredients, wool, from sheep to spinning to fabric. Pemberton's Renata Barum knits in a lot of love as well. It's very relaxing, spinning. It's really nice, you just sit and you can think about whatever. Taking a page from a fairy tale, Renata Barum's medieval home is her muse as she hand spins wool into yarn. Basically, when you're spinning, what you do is you're just drafting and you're just pulling it out and just adding twist, and then it becomes strong. Blurring the lines between centuries, this Pemberton textile artist is reviving an ancient art form and starting her woven works from scratch. This is what happens when it comes back from the mill. It comes back in these bumps. And so this is what it looks like before I spin it. She starts with the wool of anything from buffalo to merino to alpaca and possum. So after I've spun the um, alpaca and cashmere, this is what the yarn looks like. This medieval craft allows Renata to get the right thickness and softness she is looking for, depending on its intended use. Whether she's knitting trendy hand warmers or seated at her weaving loom. I started with tapestry weaving and uh, then I stopped for quite a while and then once I moved to Pemberton, I've been here 20 years now, um, I started buying looms. Oh dear. A simple skill in theory, dating back to ancient civilizations, becomes more challenging and rewarding in relation to the chosen pattern. This is an overshot. When the Lord of the Rings came out, I just loved the cloaks that they had and um, the pattern on the cloaks. And so I spoke to this older lady that I knew and she got me the pattern and I made a blanket with the undulating weave. And uh, so that was pretty exciting. Renata's skills also include felting. By using heat, pressure and agitation, it causes the fibers to stick together, which can come in handy when it comes to knitting. Quite often, when you make something and it's too big, if you felt it, then it fits. And uh, so you can do it with your knitting. You can take knitting and felt it. So if you throw your sweater in the washing machine by mistake, it will come out felted. Keeping textile traditions alive, you can find Renata's hand spun yarn at Boggs Fabrics and her knitted and woven creations during the summer months at the Pemberton Museum. I just like doing it. It's not because I need extra sweaters, but I love the challenge of a complicated pattern and uh, I love the challenge of, you know, just spinning enough to make a shawl or something like that. From Renata Barham's unique hillside Pemberton home, I'm Jessica Turner for The Express. We're celebrating some of our favorite creative talents in the sea to sky weavers, jewelry makers, painters, and now culinary masters. Food isn't just about fuel for the body. It's a craft, an art, a science. Ooh. We're using liquid nitrogen. Yeah, maybe we play around a bit with it, but we're not a fully on scientist. We don't have microscope. There are no test tubes or Bunsen burners in this science experiment. But instead of familiar kitchen spices at the Barefoot Bistro, executive sous chef Gaetan Charest draws on foreign powders. It's not chemicals, it's always like natural product. It's like seaweed. Uh, some of it are from the seaweed, some are from like it's different kind of starch. An alchemist of the kitchen, this Quebec City native practices molecular gastronomy. I'll do tuna and amachi sashimi with a tarragon gel. I'll do as well uh, cucumber uh, and also kind of whipped cream, frozen with liquid nitrogen, and then olive oil powder. Nothing is what it seems in this culinary practice that utilizes the science behind food. It is trendy, it's like big time trendy. It's always pushing the pushing the limit and then uh, modeling food at some point that you cannot recognize it, but you get the taste of it or you play with the texture. Put my olive oil and I mix it with the tapioca maltodextrin. 
this kitchen chemistry plays with food's properties. Olive oil shape shifts from liquid into a powdery finish, all in the quest for texture. Tapioca maltodextrin, and it turn, it's got the ability of uh, turning every high content fat food uh, into a powder. So that was my first time I, I saw something like that, so I was like, whoa. A big part of molecular gastronomy is in the theatricality, the unexpected. Like Alice falling down the rabbit hole, even ice cream isn't what it seems here at the Barefoot Bistro. I will definitely have the nitro ice cream, please. Cool. When you do a uh, liquid nitrogen ice cream, like the water cells like they, they freeze so fast in the cream, so you don't have time to burst or crystallize. So you don't never get like any grainy texture. So it makes like the most silkiest ice cream. Molecular gastronomy plays a supporting role on the Barefoot Bistro menu. Science only broadens the possibilities and techniques of the kitchen, making presentation paramount. It's just opening like a brand new like uh, way of seeing food, you know, take an apple. Before we used to do like puree of it, jellies of it, now we can do like, like spheres of it, like, like bubbles of it. Or in this cucumber's case, a magic frozen foam. Turn it into something that doesn't even look at like, like it at all, but you still like preserving the taste of it. Preserving the physics of both worlds on one plate. From Whistler, I'm Nicole Fitzgerald for Shaw TV. Experience artful dining both at the bistro or at home. In addition to the restaurant, the Barefoot Bistro also facilitates a catering company. Today we are immersing ourselves in art here at Art Junction. And our biggest arts party is just around the corner. The Express Spotlight fleshes it out. From whitewater to sup to everything in between. The Real Paddling Film Festival is a great way to catch some paddling flicks while meeting fellow paddlers. All proceeds benefit the Squamish Paddling Club. Get outside and try something new. The Squamish Outdoor Recreation Expo introduced guests to local non-profit recreation clubs in the Sea to Sky. The 20 Club Showcase spans all age groups, abilities and interests. Have a spring fling. Nordic skiers can test their skinny skis on 13.5 kilometers of groomed trails leading to the Callahan Lodge as part of the benchmark series. Not a race, rather community fun. The new Jazz on the Mountain Festival lineup has been announced. 22 performers, 33 shows, one party. Listen for Kevin Ubanks. Stan Samuel and Greg Lowe. The festival includes guitar masterclasses for up-and-comers as well. A healthy art scene means a healthy community, and none are more vibrant than here in Function Junction. So come out and explore. Well, that wraps up this week's show at Art Junction. If you'd like to see your story ID on the Express, drop us a line at cdiskyexpress at shaw.ca. You can get our show on YouTube. Just search Shaw TV Whistler. Join us next week. It's Big Air, Big Arts, the World Ski and Snowboard Festival. So until then, from all of us on the Express, thanks for watching. Nicole Fitzgerald wardrobe provided by Peak Performance. Hairstyling by The Loft Salon and makeup provided by Beauty Mark. POV camera, courtesy of Contour. While filming on the mountain, parking provided by the Fire Rock Lounge. Shaw has your district updates. Bearaware funding came just in time for the end of hibernation. A Bearaware community coordinator will be hired promote the program's goals through one-on-one -on -one contact with Whistler residents and visitors, helping reduce human-bear conflicts. Not picking up your dog poo just got a lot pricier in Pemberton. A new animal control bylaw raises the previous fine of $25 to $100 for not picking up after your dog. Dog owners should always be armed with poo bags. Know what's going on around your town? Squamish Council meetings take place on the first and third Tuesday of every month, starting at 6 p.m. at the Squamish Municipal Hall. You can also catch them right here on Shaw TV. Tune in Thursdays at 9 p.m. Whistler Council meetings also take place the first and third Tuesday of every month, 
starting at 5.30 p.m. at My Millennium Place in Whistler. Watch Council Saturday at noon here on Channel 4 as well. Pemberton Council meetings are held the first and third Tuesday of every month at Council Chambers located at 1350 Astor Street, just above the Fire Hall. The first Tuesday at 7 p.m., the second Tuesday at 9 a.m.